Hello all of my CP bears, my name is Chronically Blue, and welcome back to episode 9 of Bashan. Um, <laughs> last episode. Oh, I wish I remembered. <laughs> oh, okay, so we're going to the proving ground of the pike. And we made some upgrades to it, so that way... No, wait, I don't think we have made any upgrades to it. So you're going to see what it looks like. To prepare for the wilds, Ceylonia's brushers practice at Camp Dunsey. Had to navigate a maze of pin cushions with nothing but a pike. Now I have to say that out of all the proving grounds, it's a dangerous test for a dangerous. Uh, job. This is one of the most unique. Where instead of it being oh you have to destroy everything, it's you have to be really creative. You have to hit all the switches as fast as possible. But it's a pike. You, you can't do a whole lot with a pike. You can stab and you can throw. So, you're really going to want to upgrade it as soon as possible. However, if you cannot do that, then you're most likely going to get the third place prize. But yeah, just through the first time of playing through this, it was really cool to see. Elf tonics were off limits at Camp Dunsey. They said they made you. It was really cool to see how this one was made, because it's like a maze where you have to destroy the pin cushions, but you don't want to destroy all of them, because that would take way too much time. And as the stranger just said, uh, health tonics are off limits because they make you weak, apparently, even though it's fine every other time. But you know, wh whatever, whatever. Yes, as you can see, it is very, it, it's very awesome. It made me think. The rules said he couldn't use any fancy footwork, just your brains and your pike. Yeah, so we can't even roll to dodge. Like, we are just walking and using the pike and taking damage at face value. So it's very unique, it is very cool, and as you can see right there, I'm trying to aim the pike so that I can hit everything correctly. Because I'm trying to do this as fast as possible, but it definitely doesn't look like that. I just got off work, and I am really tired, and I have lots of stuff to do that I really don't want to do. <laughs> I have dishes to do, I have uh, exercising to do, uh, no one likes either of those things, but thankfully MK Fit. Uh, it makes exercising fun, so I do very much appreciate that at the very least. Uh, if you do not know her, I will happily link her stuff down in the description. She she does awesome stuff. I really love her. As you can see, I'm just going through and walking through it just, just to make it happen. Course, one piece but was an accomplishment. that's not all. We now have to go all the way back in order to claim the prizes. It doesn't just take you there. Yeah, next prize is under 90 seconds. And considering we did it that in two minutes... That's not going to happen unless we get this upgraded. I think last episode we did the uh, we did the cauldron pot and we did the who knows where for the singer. And we got some more information about her. And I paid attention. Hey. You can see why the brushers prize those pikes of theirs. I just like how often... Uh, the kid just falls flat on his face. It's just so funny to me. Okay, looks like I'm gonna entertain us here. Oh, there it goes, okay. <laughs> like, this wasn't in the schedule. But anyway, so now we are going to go and find the final shard, or at least one of the final shards, one of the, one of the eight. One of the 17. You know, the, this, uh, this Let's Play is gonna be 5,000 parts long, because of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? Not everything blew up in the calamity. Why Colford Cauldron here blew up way ahead of its time. The cauldron boiled over some 300 years ago. They say it filled the skies with ash and the lakes with molten rot. Cool. Um, be very careful about those puffy flowers. If you, to if you shoot them, the they're going to blink the and then explode. Down. You're going to see me using lots of health tonics on this one. Just because we really need it here. I, now, theoretically, you could potentially beat the entire game without taking a hit. Why would you do that? I don't know. It is an option. Uh, there's no trophy for it. So there's no reward for it. Wilds, just bragging rights. Too. And even so, I don't. I, it'd be really hard to do that. So that's why I'm really glad that we got the distillery drinks that cause us to have two extra health tonics and two extra black tonics. It takes a certain stubborn pride to keep on living in a place like this. As for us, 
We learned an awful lot from Colford Calder. I hate this weapon. That learning led to some interesting inventions. I I hate this weapon. So this is the flamethrower. Right uh, how it works is it's really great and effective against plants because it's fire. But you have to stop using it in order for it to reload. Now you could use it for like three seconds, let it go, and then immediately start using it again. But it won't go. It won't last a while. See how fast that decreases. Look at that. It goes down so fast. This is my least favorite weapon. There's going to be a few more that we do obtain in the game that are going to be a little harder to maneuver. But this is just this is just my least favorite one. It I I don't like it. I really don't like it. It's just. The fire to me is way too slow, even without upgrades, and the reloading takes way too long in my opinion. Plus, it doesn't even have that far of a reach. Like, with most of the weapons here, they have a good amount of reach, even the hammer. The hammer's pretty good. But with the flamethrower, it, it's like you gotta be right next to the enemy in order for it to do any damage. It, it's so annoying. Sure, we dusted off a good many secrets out here. Now, we will be able to upgrade us that way the fire spread more and they reach farther and the reload is better, but it's but we discovered it's really hard for me to back it up. It, this is just my least favorite weapon of the entire game. Thankfully, there's going to be an arsenal very close by so we can switch it out for one of the better weapons. I mean... The unforgiving scent of sulfur's dirt. So there's another weapon that we are going to be getting very soon. That's kind of like a cannon almost. And that's my second least favorite weapon. Uh, I'll go into more detail about that once we get there. As for right now, we're just blowing up the little onion flowers that keep reappearing to try to avoid the uh, stinky poopoo -poo powder. Look at that, it doesn't even burn. You mean to tell me that these plants are not going to face everlasting damage from the fire? That's so dumb, I, I don't like this. I really don't like it. Anyway, I am very excited. I, okay, I don't think I talked about this yet, but uh, there is a Reddit page that I go on called uh, Reddit Let's Play, or r slash Let's Play, where it's really for the small Let's Play uh, content creators. And they have Update Mondays, Workshop Wednesdays, The Back Fridays, and Spotlight Saturdays. Now on the Update Mondays, you, you can, can either things, you update people them. about what you're doing, uh, any new videos that you made, anything the like that. Ash, Workshop we Wednesdays. Uh, you're just being like, hey, here's something I'm kind of working on. Uh, it's specifically supposed to be more geared towards, like, open-ended questions. Like, hey, what's what's the best thing for commentary when you don't know what to talk about? Anyway. Or, hey, I'm working on this picture as a thumbnail. What's, um, what's some stuff? For Feedback Friday, that's, that's also for it, but, like, it's once it's done. Uh, lots of people use it in order to be like, Hey, Never here's my recent video, so much life and I, I'm, I'm not gonna Places talk down on them, but some, it, it's, one of the specific rules is to be very specific as to what kind of feedback you want from it, and the some people will just post their videos and be like, yep, here's my video, and they're like, okay, but what feedback do you want? And it is a good way in order to get you know, some views, but it's also really good in order to, for people to be like, hey, I have five subscribers, I would really like some feedback here so I can continue to grow my channel. And the Spotlight Saturday is where you're just like, hey, here's my new video, I hope you all like it, here's a short little thing about it, so you can feel a little more wanting to click and watch the video. And anyway, for the Spotlight Saturday, I posted my video of Conquer Live and Reload the first one. And I actually, After I won. All, it made me so happy. Side, and the worst part, <laughs> I 
I don't know. It's like, Look it's like chronically blue. What could possibly be bad about winning Spotlight Saturday? It's the fact that I didn't realize it until Sunday night at 9 p.m. So I have notifications on, on my two phones, and I got no notifications about this. Absolutely nothing. So I, I was just like, oh yeah, let me just check out the Spotlight Saturday thing. This, I just want to see how I did. And it's like, hey, you won. I'm like, what? I'm like, yeah, you won. I'm like, that's awesome. But I feel kind of bad that I didn't realize it until freaking <laughs> until Sunday night. <laughs> but it, it was still super awesome. It made me so happy that people he enjoyed it. And that makes me, that, that just... It's just a lot more motivation for me. And as I said many, many, many times before, sure I do let's plays just for myself so I can force myself to play through games and actually pay attention to the story. But at the same time, when people enjoy it, that's that's amazing. And the fact that I got the Spotlight Saturday, that's the, that's the best thing ever. And out of respect, I'm just going to uh, not do the Spotlight Saturday for uh, a few weeks just so everyone else can have, like, their chance in order to get on top of the Spotlight Saturday. I will very happily watch like the submissions and uh, upvote the ones that I really enjoy, but uh, I'm mostly just going to not post my own stuff for the Spotlight Saturday for a few weeks. That way other people have a chance to Biggest win. Stink guys ever seen waiting for him on the other side. Like that, that's the thing that like makes sense to me. It's like if someone gets the gold medal in the Olympics. You kind of don't want to see them again next year because you think, oh, well, they're going to get first place. And that, that's just kind of like my rationale with it. I'm like, hey, I won this. So I'm going to take a break for a while so I can let other people have their spot on the spotlight. That's just kind of my thoughts on it. I'm still going to, if I have anything, go to the Feedback Friday and Workshop Wednesday and do the update Mondays, because update Mondays aren't really anything major. It's just, hey, here's a video I made. Here's some information about my channel. There you go. And so, with the Workshop Wednesdays, I used it a little bit for the background, and it was very helpful. I put a few different types of backgrounds before I settled on the uh, blue blanket with the stars and the moon and the sleepy bears. I was originally kind of like an ocean blue with well, something in like each corner. And I said it was like way too loud. And now I, I do agree with them. I just, you know, when someone, when you ask for feedback and you get negative feedback, you, you don't really like it. <laughs> I mean, I didn't argue with them. I was like, yeah, I guess you're kind of right. And so I just decided to be like, here we go. We're going to have a moon and a sleepy bear. And it's just, it's just kind of like, uh, asymmetric, a, asymm asymmetrically balanced. Where it's like, yeah, it's balanced, but also not like symmetrically balanced. So it's asymmetrical. Well, a good spyglass, you can still see the. And as asymmetrical is specifically where it's like, let's say you have a line, and on the left side there's a square, on the right side there's a circle. They're in the same place, but they're different colors, and they're the same size. That's asymmetrically symmetrical, or asymmetrically balanced. I mean. Symmetrical is where you just have the exact same thing on one side as the other, the exact place, exact shape, exact color, everything else like that. And that does work, but I, I really like having the sleepy bear and the moon. Because But all the fires died out. There's nothing left. Everyone's to a sleepy bear. You you don't even have to be depressed to be a sleepy bear. You just wake up and you're just like, uh, I don't I don't wanna do anything. I'm just a sleepy bear, I wanna stay in bed all day. That's completely fine. Just kick back and like watch some YouTube videos or TikTok or just do whatever you want. He comes back looking like the inside of a chimney. The shard works like a charm. You can hear the monument's heartbeat again. Okay, so we have three areas left that we can upgrade. We have the lost and found, which we're going to upgrade. We need an awful big lost and found under the circumstances. We're all a little short on friends these days, so that's a welcome sight. Here we got a trophy. Pet sitter. Uh, to get that, you have to have just a lot of stuff, really. Uh, the culture, a still life of old unwanted keepsakes. 
The brushes, they moved in shadows. But the calamity found You gotta have the land shark, the squirt, the bird, the bull, and Yeah, honestly, if you just play through the game, you're you're gonna get that. That it's not one of the hard ones. It's something that even I didn't know about because while I was playing it on the Switch, there was no achievements on the Switch. And I was like, oh hey, that's a that's a trophy. Cool. As well as there is this thing from PlayStation where they're making it so that like each trophy that you get is worth some change. But it hasn't it's only for people that pay like the hundred dollars a year or like the, the super platinum premium PlayStation Plus stuff. And I'm just like Dude, why? Like maybe that's just me, but at least with Nintendo, it's no when you a weapon. It's like a when you create an account, you get the platinum points, which are just useless. You use them for profile pictures and or wallpaper. That's about it. To master the musket, and for the gold the points, coil. you get one gold coin every time you pay a dollar in something, or is it ten gold coins for every dollar? Something like that, and then. It equals, you know, 10 cents or 1 cent. One gold coin equals one penny. And then you can use those in the shop however you want in order to get games or add-ons. Literally anything. You don't have to do anything extra the to do that. It's just there. So I'm very confused anything. as to why... They said the wild could never be tamed. If only they could see us now. I'm really confused as to why PlayStation decided to do it that way. Where it's like, yep, you gotta have this stuff. Or I could be completely wrong. That is also an option. I am completely fine with being incorrect. If someone wants to correct me, please do so. I'm not gonna yell at you. I'm gonna yell at myself, but that's about it. We spotted a pecker carrying <laughs> a shard to Mount Zan. <laughs> a shard. <laughs> oh, no. I don't, I don't like that weapon. Why are we going to the Proven Grounds? I'm sure we're probably just trying to get out of the way so I can ignore it. Welcome to Grady Incinerator, home of the hottest wings east of Ceylonia. In all seriousness, the incinerator was a dump, and it had a problem with peckers. <laughs> problem. Um, we have to fry peckers before the time Blast expires. The things would swoop in and spread trash all around until we started Speaking of fire, hot wings, couldn't just torch them all that actually once. reminds me... And I, I know the specific date, so on April 13th, 2014, I went to a party, just one of my parents' friends' parties, and they had uh, buffalo wings there. And so I just, like, I tried three, I want to say. I had three, Wasn't and to teach those I was respect. like, yeah, it's, it's a little hot, but, like, that's about it. And you gotta remember, I was... I was 13 when this happened and so I ate three buffalo wild wings and I was completely fine then I we we get home I go to bed and then I wake up so I specifically wake up four hours from the exact time as to when I Who ate the wings so hard to defend our own I was sweating I was not doing great so I woke up my parents, uh, my dad specifically. I'm like, "Hey, I'm not feeling good." To fix a brush's pike, you just and he was like, "Okay, well, work. here, I'll make you some, some food, and you can have some medicine that'll help your stomach." I'm like, "Okay," and then like I woke up the next day, and I I still felt sick, and uh. You don't have to worry about. It. I'm not gonna actually go into details as to what happened, now but I was just I was not doing great. Power. And the reason why I recall this date specifically is because a so a, a YouTuber that I used to watch uploaded a video the exact same day as to when this happened. And so I, I specifically remember watching that video as I was like sweating now. so much. And then I just I couldn't take any more. I, I called my mom and I'm like, hey, can you please bring me like some medicine or whatever? Like, could you take me home? And so she did. And then I just went home and then stuff happened um so that's why i never eat uh wings unless they are completely unseasoned <laughs> that I, everyone has a reason for everything so i just want to let you know about like that specific reason without going into detail because i know people have uh triggers and such and heck even i have a trigger sometimes that even i don't i know what it is 
but most of the time it doesn't phase me. It's very rarely when I'm like, okay, I need to step outside now. That, uh, I don't feel great now. Nothing makes a gun so dangerous. That's something that's eye. just completely on me. But, yes, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoy this episode of Bastion. I will see you all next time. Goodbye, CB Bears.